As part of our acquisition of knowledge class through the Honors College at the University of South Florida, we were asked to interview a researcher at the university. After narrowing a long list of candidates, we chose to interview Dave McQueen. McQueen performed his undergraduate studies at the University of North Carolina at Wilmington and received a Bachelor's of Science as a business major with a minor in psychology. He started his graduate studies at USF in 2009 and began instructing in 2010. He is currently a PhD candidate performing research on the effects of drugs on human behavior. The following is our brief interview with him. How did you become interested in your field of research? Well, that's a, I, I took sort of a strange path to, to my line of research, uh, or at least you know, different than, than most. Uh, I'd always been interested in drug effects uh, you know, from a philosophical perspective, because I think uh, drug use you know, speaks to some of the, the questions that man has always had. You know, if you can take micrograms of a substance and it changes uh, your perception of, of you know, the world, your perception of time, uh, the way you think, the way you act, then it makes you wonder uh, what really makes you you. You know, what really makes an individual themselves if uh, it can be altered by such a small amount of, of, a, uh, of a compound. So I was interested in drugs for, for that reason for a long time and um, uh, did some studies as an undergraduate uh, working on, on drug studies. But I was a business major, so I expected to go into the workforce and, and you know, uh, start a career, which, which I did when I graduated with my business degree. And uh, my first job was working as a recruiter for the pharmaceutical industry, uh, particularly in marketing and market research. So uh, my job was to uh, speak with uh, pharmaceutical and biotech companies and uh, convince them that I, I could find uh, the candidates for the, the jobs that they were having trouble filling. Uh, so a lot of the positions they have require very specific experience and there may be only a handful of people in the country who really have the experience that would be necessary for that position. Then you, you call candidates and you, you, try to, uh, you, you try to find the one for whom this position would be perfect, who would you know, want that position, who that would be a step up for. But uh, as part of this process, you get really a peek behind uh, the curtain of how drugs are researched and how drugs are then marketed. And uh, to tell you the truth, I, I didn't really like what I saw. Uh, you realize that there's a lot of manipulation involved and uh, the pharmaceutical and biotech industry are exactly that, an industry. You know, they, uh, they serve to, uh, uh, to profit their shareholders. Uh, and that's, that's how capitalism, that's how business runs. But it's not always in the best interest of human health. And so I decided after doing that for about uh, a year that I really wanted to go back and uh, research drugs from an academic perspective. Because uh, from what I saw, there needed to be you know, greater checks and balances to the, the data that is produced by the industry. You know, they, they run their own studies and, and publish them as well. And they can sometimes be a, mi a bit misleading. So I decided to, to go back and, and research drugs, uh, and very fortunately, the uh, master's program in psychology at the university I was at uh, for my undergraduate degree, uh, the University of North Carolina Wilmington, had uh, a, an excellent uh, behavioral pharmacology lab, uh, which I joined and uh, began researching the effects of uh, illicit and experimental drugs on memory. And the program also had a clinical uh, track where uh, you also get clinical training, you meet with clients, uh, and it, uh, it prepares you for licensure within the state at the master's level. And uh, I, originally I wasn't interested in, in clinical work at all, but my uh, primary advisor uh, really recommended that getting involved in clinical work was a great way to get a good research perspective, you know, to, to learn more about uh, how substance abuse manifests itself uh, within a population and, and what the critical issues were to study. So uh, I said, sure, you know, I'll do that too. And um, I, I joined their clinical track and, and that has been a very, very rewarding experience for me because, uh, you know, as I mentioned, I, it really does inform uh, your research and how you pursue it. So from there, I, I, after that point, I was pretty dedicated to uh, studying both uh, the effects of drugs experimentally 
but also uh, different treatment avenues for people who suffer from uh, substance abuse disorders. And uh, since, since that point, uh, the, the number of different research methods I employ has, has expanded to you know, include uh, behavioral assays, uh, genetic analysis, uh, and such. And um, it, it's amazing that you, know, you think that we generally think of research as, as solving you know, really specific problems that you see within the population, but you also find that, that these studies tell you a lot about uh, you know, the neurobiology of, of the human mind. And so that's been really rewarding as well, is not only uh, do you learn how to develop better drugs and uh, you know, uh, learn about treatments for people who, uh, who are suffering from a variety of problems, but you also learn a lot about how the mind works that way as well, so that's been, been great as well. Um, how does your experience as an undergraduate student affect your research today? That's a, that's a really interesting one because um, if it hadn't been for some excellent teachers and mentors during my undergraduate education, uh, I certainly wouldn't be here talking to you today. I, I wouldn't be in this field. I'd probably still be in a, a, a recruiter office uh, making calls. Um, it was very difficult for me to get involved with a psychology lab uh, as a business undergraduate because there's a lot of competition for these lab spots even though they're volunteer and not a lot of people are really um, that keen on, on taking a business student who you know, may have less of an idea of uh, how the research process works at that point. But I had a, a really great mentor, Dr. Uh, uh, Richard Ogle. Uh, who's now uh, the chair of the UNCW Psych Department. He was willing to take me into his lab and uh, train me on research methods. And that's really what sparked my, my whole interest in, in academic uh, research. And I'm uh, very, very thankful uh, for that. Uh, you know, the, the classes, of course, help as well, but really getting the opportunity to, to get involved as an undergraduate and do work outside of the classroom, I think, is critically important for anybody who's looking for a research career. And often that's sort of where you learn what you're interested in and, uh, uh, and ways that you uh, acquire information about the world and, and about truths. What are some of the most common changes in behavior and learning that result from drugs? Uh, has your research proven that certain drugs have a tendency to make individuals more creative, better thinkers, more ethical? It's, uh, it's a challenge sometimes to characterize the effects of drugs because um, we all have a lot of uh, what we call expectancies about uh, what drugs do. You know, we've, seen, uh, we've seen policy efforts to reduce the availability or use of drugs. We have personal examples from our own lives where you know, we've seen somebody experience consequences of their substance use. Or you know, we've seen people uh, have uh, you know I I advantages and, and have problems solved by substance use as well. Uh, I know I've seen individuals uh, treated pharmacologically for depression and seen uh, how much that's helped them. I've seen individuals with uh, severe uh, ADHD uh, who have had a lot of their consequences lessened by the use of uh, stimulant drugs, but. Those same drugs, uh, uh, particularly you know, the stimulants, can cause a lot of problems for other people. And when, when you try to characterize what this drug does, what you realize is drugs don't have one effect, they have many, many effects. And these effects interact with the environment. And to get a good grasp on what the drug is actually doing, the first thing you have to do is, is think about well, what do we really want to look at? When we say a drug impacts memory, it begs the question of what types of memory? You know, is all memory the same? Is that memory you have of your uh, 16th birthday the same thing as being able to remember that you know, George Washington is our first president? So you get into these definitional issues where you say, well, if we want to see if this drug makes somebody more outgoing, what do we look at in terms of outgoing? You know, what does that mean? How do we define it? And uh, it, it, it's, it's tough to paint drugs with a broad stroke because uh, they will have different effects on different domains and different people. 
uh, you know, the drug that uh, allows one person to, to, to study better and to you know, you know, concentrate, improve their grades, be more productive just as a whole, for a, another person uh, may cause you know, dependency issues, may, uh, may make them seem more scatterbrained, you know, to use a very um, uh, generic term. Uh, so it, it's really tough to, to paint even, a, even within a single drug what its uh, effect is going to be. And unfortunately, we, we have to talk a lot in generality. So I'm, I'm not sure if that really answers your question, but it, it presents some of the challenges in trying to answer a question like that. What has your research led you to believe about what defines us as individuals? How has your research shaped your beliefs on the relationship between the human mind and the body? Well, um, as a uh, uh, as a neuroscientist, you know, uh, we, we look at, at uh, the body and the mind as one and the same, and it's very important that that we do so uh, because if, if you look at those as, as separate things, uh, you can't really investigate the things that that we want to investigate. You know, we presume that every experience you have, every interaction with the environment is is causing changes in in your you know in your physiology and uh, we perceive those as changes in our mind you know we, we think of those as uh, as as changes in ourself as changes in our perception and you you know we really have to relate those to it as one and the same or else it's impossible to, to study them if there were a mind outside of the, the body and physiology, how do you how do you investigate that? How do you uh, how do you form hypotheses that can be tested uh, without looking at you know behavior and physiology? So, really, from our perspective, uh, they're really investigating the same thing. But that's not to say that you can't talk about it in different ways and. Uh, Different levels of analysis will characterize uh, experience and behavior in different ways. Um, you know, social research, uh, you might ask about how somebody feels about something, about what their emotional experience uh, is like. And that, that's no less valid than taking you know, EEG recordings of uh, you know, gross electrical activity uh, uh, emanating from the scalp. Uh, but there are different ways of talking about the same thing. And uh, I think one of the most exciting but also challenging parts of research is looking across these different ways we research the same phenomenon and determining how they integrate, and how they're one and the same, and how we can bridge those connections between different research methods and different vocabulary. Have you ever worked with someone in an unrelated field who greatly impacted your research? Oh, yeah. Um, the beauty of psychology is it's a um, it's a very integrated discipline. You know, we get to work with people from all different fields. Uh, get to work with molecular biologists, uh, geneticists, social workers, and uh, all of them uh, aid in, in what we do. And the the only way to to I think really do impactful constructive research is, is to collaborate with people from different fields because they give you a different perspective and uh, in psychology as it as it is today our challenge is really integrating all these so most certainly a number of different fields impact uh, what I do and, and are critical to it. <laughs>